Hi guys. In this series, we have seen multiple ways of using Julia. One of them was uh, VS Code or Visual Studio Code. Another one was Jupyter Notebooks. And now here's a third way of using Julia is basically as a web app. You can create your own web applications powered by Julia. For instance, here I have on my local machine, a Julia web application works in the browser and it produces this code. And the underlying code is here. And you can see it's just a function, a function. And I've got some several calls to the function. And this has all been output to uh, 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 in a web browser. And I can, so I can basically create my own web application with dynamic content powered by Julia. Now the question is, how do I set something like that up? Well, the first step would be to get XAMPP. XAMPP is a sort of a, mm, let's say it is a, a, an environment with an Apache server, a database, a Maria, in this case MariaDB, uh, and you have two applications here, PHP and Perl. But we don't care about these two because we're going to be using Julia instead of these two. So first of all, you download XAMPP, install it somewhere. And by the way, it's, it's, it, is, it is a free and open source application. So once you've installed XAMPP, you go in the folder and they only got to do uh, some changes in only one file. And that is in, in your XAMPP folder, you go to Apache, then to conf, and then this application, this, sorry, this file here, httpd.conf, open it up. And here's the content of this, of, this, uh, of this file. Now, you go right to the bottom and what you add is this here, these two lines. I'm gonna put them in the description below so you just can copy and paste them. These two lines, what these say, what these, with these two lines you enable XAMPP to handle .ja, jot, sorry, .jl files. And you see here, uh, I have this here enables my version of XAMPP to handle Julia files and as well Python files. So I have added these two down here. That's the first step. And the second step is search for document root and you can set up your uh, document root. For instance, XAMPP by default uses htdocs in, in the folder XAMPP. Now, I personally don't like to have my stuff within XAMPP because if I update XAMPP, you know, all that stuff gets deleted or somebody else updates XAMPP, put it this way and they just forget about htdocs, you know, I could lose everything. So what I did, I did document root somewhere outside of XAMPP. Yeah, so all my public document documents, which means public by this, in this case means uh, sort of uh, everything which gets served by the web server, like the page you just saw is in this folder public. Uh, I set it like this and then as well as directory and those with the, you know, with, the, with this pound uh, or, or hashtag uh, symbol, these are common, so they don't act. So the only thing which is valid is this as document root and directory is this. See, and the others I've just commented out. Right. That's the second change you've got to do. And you just have to do a third change. And like I said, to get here, it's like you can see it's like at line 251 and uh, or it's like line 251 and or just search for document root. And the third change you have to do, you have to enable Apache to also recognize um, Julia files. And that is done like this. If you search for this, I have module their module. You can see here the types of uh, start or home pages that um, uh, um, XAMPP or Apache is able to recognize. And you have, you see here a lot of PHP, Perl, and so on. And as well as Python, index Python, home Python, and index JL, home JL. So I added these two now. So um, XAMPP is also able to handle Julia files. And 
Sometime previously, I added uh, these two, so uh, ZAMP can also handle um, Python files. The rest was by default in, in there, I didn't add it. So because you see ZAMP was conceived or is conceived as a sort of a, an Apache server to handle PHP and Perl files, but you can also extend it to be able to handle Julia files and Python files. So, you know, you can have then your own Julia web apps. And obviously it works in ZAMP and the application, your web app is basically a web app which works. The only thing you have to ensure if you want to upload it to an online uh, host, you got to ensure that the host is able to have or that you're able to have Julia on that host server. That's that's the one thing that you make to make sure because a lot of these uh, uh, standard web hosts just have PHP, don't even have Python. So you know you that's that's the one issue you have to ensure if you want to put your web application online, or you know you just uh, sort of get your own virtual machine or server and just uh, have Julia installed on that. Right. So these are the changes that you have to do. Three changes you have to do in um, in httpd.conf. I'm gonna. Uh, paste it all, uh, put it all in the description below so you can just copy and paste it. So once this is done, you can install, uh, you can you can start uh, ZAMP and you get this control panel. And what you have to do, if, if your ZAMP is already running, well, just stop your Apache and restart it. And then all these changes would be effective. And if you haven't started it, well, then start it up. And then you would see if these two are green, then everything's go. And once this is done, you would be ready to go. So, and then you would, you just, you know, you, then, sorry, before I, before I forget, then the final thing, what you got to do, don't forget to have this as the first line in your uh, Julia page, which is to be served on the server. This is, this is the index page, which is served here. And this is in my public directory there's a subdirectory called exp and in it i have this and what you have to do in your in your index page or in your you know starting page of uh, in your sorry in your starting page in your julia starting page you have to have this as your first line so basically it's hashtag then um, an exclamation mark mark and then what you have to do you have to add the path to your julia uh, program. This is the Julia interpreter or the Julia program and you have to add that as a first line in your index page. And then that's 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 very important because otherwise you know the ZAMP wouldn't know where to look for Julia in order to execute those uh, those lines. And then when you're when you're um, printing something to the web to a web page this has to be the first line because this ensures that uh, ZAMP as well knows that this is a web page or everything following this is uh, destined for the web page and it's basically HTML. And that's what we're doing here. We're, we're producing HTML. These, this is basically HTML. And you see here, this BR is the line break between this and that. And you can see here, those two BRs are these two line breaks between this line and that line. You see, and that's that's the way it is. So, like I said, apart from those httpd.conf changes, what you gotta do are these changes here. First of all, have this as your first line and this before any line you output. I can have the function up here. That doesn't matter because it is not outputting anything, but my outputs have to be below that statement and you can see if I save it and run it it should work there you go okay so that's how you can have your own Julia web apps or basically your web apps powered by Julia and the the programming is the same just like just the only thing you have to remember that every time you output it is not enough to have println but you have to have this as your first statement and Obviously, you'd have to produce HTML. I mean, obviously, this is not like good HTML. There's no, you know, tags. There's no uh, uh, divs. There's nothing. But here already, if I need the line break, I'd have to 
input a, a sort of a, a break element from HTML. It is not enough just to you know do two print lens and expect to have um, sort of to have the contents appear on different lines. Right. I hope this is this is helpful. I hope uh, you can use it to build your own Julia web apps. Uh, if you like this video, just don't forget to like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you got some constructive feedback, just leave your feedback in the comments below.